Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's video. This week I'm doing something kind of different than what I normally do and I'm straying away from ball gowns and princess dresses to do something more historical, which I decided that this week I want to make a 50s inspired prom dress. Not that I'm going to prom, I'm graduated, but I have the perfect fabric for it that I was recently inspired to use and I am really excited about it and I'm excited to do something that is a bit different than what I normally do. When I say um, a vintage dress, I obviously am not going to do construction methods that are how they would have made in the past. I just want to go for the silhouette that I am inspired by from the 50s. Let me show you the fabric I'm really excited about. I ordered it quite a while ago. I have so many different ideas. And also this video is proudly sponsored by Squarespace, who you'll hear more from later. We are about to enter the land of messiness that is my sewing room. I've been working on my fiber optics dress recently, so I have to keep it the door closed until that's totally out of the way because my cats have been chewing on it, which is obviously not good because it's wires and it's not just normal fabric. Here we are. This is the fabric I'm working with. I'm gonna show you what inspired me. I also have a lot of pictures that I'm inspired by, so I don't know exactly what kind of look I'm gonna go for yet, so we will figure that out together as we go. I'm also waiting to pick up a Joanne's order for the petticoat. This this is just a big mess because I was playing around with it, but I, okay, I was playing around with the fabric, so it's a huge mess, but here it is. I bought six yards of this from Joann's uh, probably a month or so ago. It's just been collecting dust, but I think it's so beautiful. It's like this tulle ruffled fabric. It is sheer, but I'm actually excited because I can do some layering with colors. So this is the inspiration and I've come across a lot of ruffled tulle 50s prom dresses through my research that I've been inspired by. I don't think it's too far from the norm of what somebody would have worn to prom back then. I do think it's just really beautiful and I can't way to use it. Since this is sheer, I obviously need something over it. So I've ordered some tool from Joann's that I need to go pick up that I need to make a petticoat out of. And I got two different colors. Since it's an online order, I don't know exactly what they will turn out to be. Um, I obviously need a lining and I could go with something that matches this color. So I was thinking um, if I put this fabric under it, which it's very cheap quality wise. So I might use the not shiny side because I don't want this to look cheap, but I also don't want to go spend a fortune on fabric. So I'm thinking that I can just make a little circle skirt to put under it with this because then this will be bunched and you'll kind of just get this peeking through if that makes sense, if you can see it. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys a few pictures up on the screen of what I'm thinking about. There was a few that I came across that I really really like but I also feel kind of limited with the ruffle I don't want to add too much and have it be over the top I'm going to go pick up the tools so that I can get started on the petticoat because you have to start with the base And I'm hoping to get this pretty fluffy and I want it to be kind of tea length. So let's get started Okay, we're back. I've acquired the goods I got the tool that I needed for the petticoat. For some reason, they gave me this dark one, which I don't think this is the color I ordered. I'll double check, but it's fine. I'll make it work. Then I got some things, not for this project, but I do think they're really cute for a dirndl dress I'm gonna make. So I'm driving up to Leavenworth next week and I wanted to make a dress to match the place, obviously. But that will be for a different video coming soon. Right now we're going to work on the petticoat now. I don't think the tool is enough. I got three rolls that have 25 yards each and they're six inches wide, so I was gonna make that work. And I think I'm going to add something extra because that's just not gonna be enough and it's not gonna be poofy enough. I know that I have a whole bowl of stiff crinoline somewhere in this closet. I do, I do know that I spilled pasta sauce on it, so some of it might not be usable, but I'm thinking that if I do two layers of this and smush it in between two layers with the colored tool, it will have just a nice effect. It's really, really stiff and starched. I'm gonna use this as well. Let's work on a petticoat. I'm about ordering on Amazon, but I said, let's just make it. Let's just make it. That's what we're gonna do. I was trying to decide how long I want the skirts to be, and I was thinking maybe about the length of the dress I'm wearing now. If it has like a petticoat under it, I think it would be really pretty. I could probably even go longer if I wanted, but 
any longer it might look awkward. So I'm gonna measure this skirt and make the petticoat however long this is. Cause I'm imagining poofed outwards, it will be really pretty. One of my cats destroyed my measuring tape and I'm really, really sad about it. I need to go get a new one. 27, okay, we'll make it 27 inches. Go. Oh no, no, no. Huber, I'm not playing with you. Hey, you're getting locked out. six of these 14 inch panels and I'm going to make two layers. So it's gonna be one panel and then on the bottom of the panel, I'm gonna sew two of them and I'm gonna do that twice so that I have two layers and there'll be two at the top and then four at the bottom and then I'll fill it in with the tool. These boys are about to pounce each other. His tail is ready to pounce. I was actually wrong in that last clip. I need five per layer. So I need to cut five more strips. But you guys, I just finished the layer number one and it's pretty poofy already. Obviously the dress will weigh it down so I need at least one more, but I'm pretty pleased with how stiff it is uh, and I really like it. Before we begin, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building platform that offers a variety of tools for your specific business needs. No matter what the goals for your website are, Squarespace can help you accomplish those with the many features that they offer. One of my favorite features to use is the Squarespace Video Studio app, where you are able to make professional videos that you can then share with your audience and they even help grow your audience, which I think is very important. For the Squarespace website that I've been building, I have been loving using their portfolio tools to be able to create a portfolio of all of the dress designs that I've made that I'm then able to share with potential business partners, and not just that, but family and friends as well. You can head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Louise, or you can use code alexandralouise at checkout for 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's get back to sewing a 50s inspired prom dress. I finished the second one. Now I am making some ruffles out of the tool to put on the hem of the two skirts I just made. And I'm using the same method I did when I was making my Cinderella life action dress for that petticoat. To make ruffles, I am just have this on the roll right here. And I am just holding this top thread up here pretty tight so that it creates this tension so that when it sews, it ruffles up without me having to like do it by hand. So I'm gonna do it a second and like show you what I mean. So I'm holding it like this. And then that just makes all of these ruffles instantaneously and I don't have to do anything else other than sew all the way down. This roll actually didn't last as much as I thought it would. I think that one roll of this is equal to one ruffle all the way around the petticoat. So I'll have three tool ruffles. You guys, I'm freaking out. I was sewing and there was a spider in the tool and I kept trying to get it with this piece of fabric and I can't get him and he's like right there. I don't know what to do. He's like really fast. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I don't want to smush him in there. Oh my gosh, 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 oh my two layers of tulle and then the two crinolines I made and I think it's a really good poofiness so I'm gonna leave it at that and work on the skirt and then I might go back and add that because I think the skirt will be heavy and weigh this down heavily but right now I'm tired of working on a petticoat and I want to work on something more fun so let me get at the tulle fabric. Got my fabric. I think I'm gonna just cut a really quick circle skirt out of this stuff to have underneath so that I can get that out of the way before I deal with the tool. Dude, I was 
literally just about to cut right where you're sitting. Can you move? Oh, I think I cut about five yards off for the skirt. And now I am trying to decide how I want to fit all of this into a very small section. Right now it's five yards and my waist is about 25, 24 inches. I don't know if I want to pleat it or gather it. Preferably I would want to gather it, but I think it might be too like full if I do that. I don't want it to be super thick at the waist, but I think maybe if I gather this net part and leave out the ruffles, that maybe it would work. So I'm gonna run it through a machine and see if I can gather it nicely. And if not, I'll have to pleat it. I think the gathers work, thank goodness. I'm gonna sew them down really quick so that I don't lose their shape. This might be a little bit tricky. I also think I cut the perfect amount to go around the skirt where it's not too much. It's like not too little, obviously. So I'm really thrilled with how this is going. I just need to sew these down really quick. This actually looks surprisingly good even without the petticoat has great volume. So I think what I have now for the petticoat is great. I'm really glad to have this gathered. It looks really chunky right now, but if you pull that back, it will look good once there's a bodice. So I think I'm going to put this aside, work on the corset, and I have no idea what I wanna do for the design of that. I have a matte satin that's kind of similar to this color that I think I'll use for the base. I don't even remember what this is from. I'll use this for the bodice and then I'll probably just figure something out, but I'm gonna use this corset pattern I have right here and change the neckline up a bit because then I don't have to draft anything and all is good. I definitely ended up drafting something else, obviously, but it all worked out in the end. with ruffling this fabric on the bust. I think I want it to be ruffled at the top and then kind of tight down here. So I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet down there. I'm gonna try and decide what to do with the back. I don't know if there should be ruffles in the back. I guess it might look kind of cute. So I just kind of need to pleat this, I think, and then hand sew it down in a way where all the ruffles go up and then do like a waistband before you add the skirt. The whole process of doing this bodice took several hours. I basically pinned each ruffle in place how I wanted it, and then I went in and hand sewed every single one down. And my fingers are still sore from it, let me tell you, but I'm really glad that I did it because now the ruffles hit just where I want them to hit. Um, and yes, this is me wrapping tool around the bodice while watching Twilight edits with my friends because we were having a party, but I had stuff to get done. So I wrapped the tool around the bodice to give that snatched effect for the waist because the skirt is so poofy and it worked out really well, I think. <laughs> How good this looks. I think it's amazing. It's kind of the vibe I was going for. It was kind of a last minute decision to do this. I wrapped this around several times and I'm sewing it down so that it stays. And then at first I was like, uh oh, if I wrap it all around, that might be bad. But I'm just going to cut the tool up here and sew it down on either side. And then you've got a really, really nice looking thing. So right now I'm going to do that and just cut it up like this. Kind of nerve wracking. And then I'll sew that down. Oh no, I sewed it to my dress form. Oh no, what do I do? I attached the skirt to the bodice. It's kind of bulky, so I'm hoping I made it big enough. And now I am just adding the hook and eyes. I didn't want to do a zipper because I always struggle with zippers on fluffy dresses like this. The hook and eyes are also a weakness of mine. So I just have one more to sew and then I'll just need to sew up the bottom of the skirt and I think it should be done.
had so much fun making this dress. And when I put it on a few minutes ago for the first time, it's so much fun to wear, let me tell you. I ended up not having to do too much else to the petticoat because the crinoline really has held its shape and I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I think I might add a ribbon right here. I think it would look really cute with it. But for now, I am really happy with how the dress turned out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked how the dress turned out as well. And I will see you next time.